peace. According to the doctrine of the Trinity, there are three persons in the Godhead, Father, Son, Spirit. And these three persons are supposed to be co-equal, meaning they have the same exact nature. One is not above the other, one is not beneath the other. They are equally God. Now these three persons, according to the Trinity doctrine, are not supposed to be three separate gods. They are three persons who are joined together in will and they co-equally consist and subsist as the Most High. I was wondering and thinking, pondering. The first person of the Trinity, the Father, is said in Christian doctrine to be so offended by the sins of human beings that one, he demands a sacrifice to appease his anger. And because of man's sins, the relationship between man and the first person of the triune doctrine has been severed, has been cut off. And until he received his sacrifice, there could not be any uh, relationship between man and the first person. So in this economy, the second person in the triune doctrine, the Son, incarnates and becomes the Messiah, Jesus, peace be upon him. And because, according to Christianity, sins cannot be forgiven freely, sin cannot be let go, mercy and grace cannot be applied without blood, the blood of a dead sacrifice and the sins of the world require a a sacrifice that is like no other it couldn't be just rams it couldn't be goats it couldn't be cows it couldn't be camels it had to be the sacrifice of the second person of the trinity now here these are the questions that popped into my mind why isn't the son equally as offended as the father? And furthermore, why isn't the spirit as offended as the father? They are co-equally God. If the father is greatly offended of sins, shouldn't the son and the spirit also be co-equally offended? And if the father receives a great sacrifice to appease his offense, shouldn't the second and third person of the Trinity also receive a sacrifice as well? Now, if you say, well, the sacrifice was for all three, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what theologians say. They say the first person of the Trinity received the sacrifice. He was the one that was greatly offended. Why isn't the second person, the son and the spirit, why aren't they so offended? Why don't they demand a sacrifice? And if they're co-equal, shouldn't they receive a sacrifice? Why would the second person have to sacrifice himself to the first person? Why couldn't the third person sacrifice themselves to the first person? And why would any one person have to sacrifice to any other person if they're co-equally God? If it was equality, shouldn't each one sacrifice themselves to the other? So if the son sacrifices himself to the father, shouldn't the father then sacrifice himself to the son? And shouldn't the father and the son also sacrifice themselves to the spirit? And shouldn't the spirit 
sacrifice himself to the Father and to the Son for there to be co-equalness. Also, we're told by theologians that God cannot just let sin go. It offends him so greatly, he can't just let it go. But doesn't he just let it go according to the Trinity? Because God is three persons. Only one person receives the sacrifice for, this, for their offense. The other two people let it go. The Son lets it go. The Spirit lets it go. They don't demand a sacrifice. They accept, supposedly, they, they just accept that the Father is appeased. And they accept the repentance of the sinner. So why couldn't the Father just let it go? Like the Son and the Spirit. They're all God. Hmm. You know, I still remember when I was 10 years old, growing up in church, and I asked my grandmother, who was a devout Christian woman, Grandma, how can Jesus be God and the Son of God at the same time? And my grandmother looked at me in shock and awe, astonishment, and a little bit of disgust. I felt like a little heretic. <laughs> and I still feel like a heretic because technically, for not 